All right, welcome. I'm Mr. Malte. Today we are going to be looking at how to make a magazine. It's really a design lesson, but it's also going to teach you how to make stuff. This could be called how to make stuff in Google. And this would be something where you make anything for a project that's just, it's not a worksheet. It's a magazine. It could be an infographic. It could be a lot of things where you get these skills, some design, some color things, but things that will be handy in your schoolwork. So, and not boring stuff. It'll be exciting, fun, interesting. So let's get started. We're going to do this work today in slides because we all have access to slides and we're going to make a brand new slideshow. We're going to hit a new tab and type in slides.new. That takes you to a brand new thing that works with all the tools, by the way, docs.new, sheets.new, all the Google tools. So I've got my brand new slideshow. I could even rename it. Oh, I didn't like that. Okay, get rid of the themes on the side. A lot of times I'm in classes and I see students just, they leave those linger. X, get rid of those. Um, we want a blank page. There's a bunch of ways to do that. <laughs> I see this all the time where we're trying to delete, but we're in a text box and our cursor is flashing. Remember your mouse changes when you get to the corner, it turns into that little crosshairs. So we can delete by clicking and pressing backspace. Click backspace, that's one way to do it. You could also delete by clicking, dragging with your other hand, backspace, or option number three, if nothing is selected, you can go to layout, blank. So try one of those three ways. And remember, as we're doing this video, you can pause the video, and I really hope you do, or your teacher does, pause the video so you can catch up, do the things, and then press play. It's gonna be a little bit longer, but I'll have it by chapters in the YouTube machine. You can slow it down, you can pause, you can rewind, do all those fun things. So, so far, we've just deleted text boxes. Um, if you have speaker notes showing, a couple ways to get rid of them. You can click the little grabby hand down here and just click drag down, but you can also go up to view, show speaker notes, just get rid of them. Get a nice canvas here, it's blank. Now, this is not what a magazine looks like. This is still the plagiarism layout where you know, you'd put a picture and a bunch of stuff from Wikipedia. It's not what we want. So we're gonna change this into a magazine by going to file, and down at the bottom, you have to scroll a little bit, page setup, file, page setup. From widescreen, we're gonna go to custom, file, page setup, custom. And now in here, the size, oh, the size of a piece of paper is 8.5 by 11. So eight and a half by 11 and apply. That's gonna change this to a piece of paper size. Same as a standard piece of paper in your classroom. I'll just show that one more time. Remember to pause the video though. File, page setup, custom, 8.5 by 11. If you wanted to make it the other way, it'd be 11 by 8.5. So now I've got my, my nice magazine. Not yet. So we're gonna need a background image and we need a frame, we need all kinds of things. So I know you could put colors on here, but we're gonna grab a picture. And my favorite place to get a picture from is actually Pixabay. Pixabay is a wicked awesome site. It popped up there. Pixabay. And we're going to look for, I'm going to do a little, what should we do? Travel. With a plane in it. And lots of things come up, but they're the other way. They are landscape. We want something that's portrait or vertical. So orientation, vertical. So head to Pixabay. Search for something, whatever your magazine is going to be about. It could be Canada, it could be you know travel, it could be whatever. I'm going to grab one here and go to the vertical under orientation. And once you get there, I'm going to find one that I'm going to use. I like this one. Click on it. I'm going to right click. I have my little extension saved to Google Drive, but for you in a Chromebook, it should save right to your drive anyway or to your recents. So I'm going to save that picture. I hope. Alrighty. Now I know there's a bunch of ways to get pictures on here. I could have dragged it up and just let it drop down and then cropped it. That's one way I could have done it. You could also search for images just in background, but I tend not to like the images as much. But just for the sake of simplicity, we're just going to go to background and use the background image. It might skew our image just a tiny bit, but for this, it's okay. Choose image. 
here's my airplane. Done. Fantastic. Remember to pause, Pixabay, grab that picture, save it, background, add your image. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a frame because, you know, in Time Magazine or some of those magazines, they have a nice frame, National Geographic, that makes it into a real magazine looking kind of thing. And I just want to show that. So we're going to add a frame and then I'll talk about the color that we're going to make our frame. So frames are going to be under shapes and shapes are, oddly enough, also text boxes. So if I were to put a shape here, I could actually type inside of it because it is a text box. But the one we're going to use is just a frame. So shapes and frame is right here. And it gives you that little crosshairs. This is where I want you to use two hands, two fingers, click and drag. And if you're observant, if you're astute, you're noticing that when I get to the borders, I get little lines that kind of snaps to my border. So that's really what I wanted to do. I'm gonna let go. It's that boring gray. It's also a little bit thick. So when you have these shapes, you get the little orange handle. Again, two fingers, click, I'm gonna drag that orange handle, kind of make it a little bit thinner. Oh, and it's not quite on the edge. I can use my arrow keys just to line it up, stretch it out, make sure it's where I want it to be. By the way, when you're moving with your arrow keys, you can move like quite a bit with your arrow keys, but you can hold down shift and arrow key. That moves one pixel at a time. So that's a good little tip. Okay, now when I'm doing this in classes, I often see this, you know, with this picture, and then they have this, I'm sorry, horrible, ugly color. I mean, there's a whole bunch of them here that are just going to look, ugh. Come on, people. Cyan, no. No. So I'll just show you really quickly. Um, you don't need to do this part, but when we're talking about color, I want to look at Adobe Color. Adobe Color is really cool because it has this whole color wheel thing, which is really fantastic for doing things. But you can extract themes. So I'm going to select a file. I'm going to grab my airplane. And what you notice is, these are colors right from the picture that match. So I could actually use this one. So if I'm looking for a frame, I don't want some crazy, you know, color like this. I want a color that's going to match. And I'm going to put that one from Adobe Color in. And it might be a little bit dark. I could lighten it up a tiny bit. But please, don't use, you know, those crazy neons, those things that are just going to look like any of these. No, no, no. Yes. Okay, so get a frame, make it big, change the color, and then we're ready to add some other stuff. So pause the video, do all those things, and catch up to me. And we'll get now some word art is our next thing. So like I said, there are text boxes, you know, where you could add text. And we're going to use text boxes in a bit. Um, there are shapes. But there's also word art, and I like word art a lot because you can do a lot of stuff with it. So I'm going to go insert word art. Where? Insert word art. Gives you a box. I'm going to do all caps because this is my big title, travel. This moves just like a picture. So I can move with my arrow keys. I can move with my mouse. Try not to do the squishy squish. Don't change the font by doing that. If you want to make it bigger or smaller, it's often good to use the keyboard shortcut. Control Alt, J is smaller, K is bigger. Control Alt, J, and K. Those are super awesome shortcuts to know. Now, again, some of the fonts that we use here at this point, you know, I see people using some really strange things or things that aren't very legible. You know, and, and you know, I like a good fun font too, but this is not really what we're going for, unless it's a Harry Potter magazine. So there are some good ones like Oswald is good for this, Anton, Impact. These are like nice, big, bold. That looks pretty good. And I already have a color for my frame. So match it up. This is a great tool that people don't use very often. I click on the frame, double click that paint format tool, and boom, you can paint other things with that. 
So that's word art. I'm also going to make what's called a cell cell line, which is you know, what the magazine is about. Travel the magazine. Those who move. It's way too big. So smaller. And I wonder if that should also be. centered. Perfect. If you're a real stickler and you want things to be absolutely in the center, just know that you can go to view, guides, and show guides, and then these things can be exactly lined up right to the middle. Line up those blue boxes to make it totally centered. Hmm? Okay, I'm going to turn off my guides for a second. All right, got my bag magazine with the border, word art, now I need some articles, so I'm going to insert this one. I'm just going to do text boxes. And article one. Make this a different font. Poppins, bold. Make it white to really stand out. Make it a little bit bigger. And if I like that, I'll get some more stuff here. This whole box, I can control D. Let's duplicate. There, I've got some articles. If you really want to make it pop off the page too, you can click it. And under format options, you can add a little drop shadow. Drop shadow is just that. It's a little shadow. It kind of hangs out below any objects, right? That might be a little intense. Here, turn on my blur radius. Ah, there we go. I'm gonna add some of this too. Why not? Ah, that really pops it off. Great. Okay. Now, I want some other things on here, and I actually found some things like the little, you know, barcode thing and all that sort of stuff. So I'm gonna add some, but I've already made a template. It's a bitly link. Bit.ly forward slash BG Magazine. I'll pop that link up for a second. But I already have a template where you can copy some of these cool things. There we go. So you can control C, pop in here, control V, grab a little barcode, some other things to make the magazine look a little more realistic. This other one I did uh, a little box that had a transparent ish border too. So you notice this is a little bit transparent. So things like that. And for interior layouts, it's not the easiest to make a whole interior layout. So you can just grab the ones that I have here on this template. I'm going to hold down shift, control would work too, control C, control V, just add some interior. So these are your articles where you could edit these and put your text inside of here. Great. Um, anything else I'm missing? I think that looks pretty good. So now this is a magazine, but remember, it could be anything that you create. This could be infographics. It could be a, I have Instagram templates you can edit. So we'll take a look. And on engaging students, I have a whole bunch of things on the digital tools page as well as in the shared Google resources. So if you want something different, you can take a look at what's there. You can see where I'm putting this magazine is going to be under digital skills in action with this little tutorial. So there you go, my friends, making a quick magazine cover that can be used for your schoolwork. And I've given you the interior pages, but you could also edit these up and make them your own. So there you go, making a magazine. Hope you had fun and good luck.